So this is where we left off last week and we talked about the three parts of our kidney, actually the four. What was this outer layer? It's kind of like this shell that, woo, that held everything together. Cortex. The cortex. And then what was the next portion, the outside portion? Actually, yeah. Okay, so right here, right here is the cortex. Okay, what's on the far outside? I told you wrong. It's like a medication. It has stuff on the inside. It holds it all together. You can like break them apart and there's powder in it. Or you can break it apart and there's liquid in it. Is that a tablet? Capsule. It's a capsule. So capsule. All right, then we have the cortex. And then what is the middle part? What's that called? Medulla. Medulla. And then the place where it all happens, right in here is what? All the filtration happens. What is it? The pelvis, the, the renal pelvis. All right, so. Let's talk about that filtration that's going to happen. So we have a basic building block. I feel like we say this all the time, right? The cells were the basic building block of what? What do cells make up? Tissue. Tissue and then, and then what? What's after tissue? Organs, Organs and then your organ systems, and then you have your whole body, right? Mm -hmm. And then we had neurons. Neurons are the building block of what? The nervous system. And now we have another N, but this time it's called a nephron. And nephrons are the building blocks of our kidney. So the nephron is where all of our filtration happens. It's like that filter that we had on the faucet, the sink faucet. So it's kind of an interesting thing to look at. Um, we have blood vessels here, and these blood vessels are surrounding the nephron. And it's kind of like, just like twisted together. You know those twisty ties or the pipe cleaners and how you could like twist them and form a shape and they're all kind of interconnected. That's what this looks like. and when it's doing its filtering we actually keep the water because water is a good thing right our body uses water for everything all those cellular processes it keeps us hydrated we want to keep that but anything that is considered waste we're going to turn into urine okay it's the same thing as the digestive tract with our feces that's something that we don't need anymore it's waste so we're going to defecate it out. We're gonna get rid of that stool. Um, but the water that we consumed in our intestines, we're gonna keep that, okay? So the water is reabsorbed into our body. We're gonna use it. It's gonna be carried through our body and then the waste is going to be excreted in this case as urine. Interesting. All right, so here's a different picture. So our blood is gonna be going through those blood vessels and picture this as our kidney, really as our nephron. And all of that's gonna be flowing through. They're all intertwined together. The water is going to exit with the blood here and anything that's waste is going to exit as urine. All right, let's talk about male versus female. So for a female, this is what you guys, I like to have you write that on your dog task sheets. A female has a vulva, okay? So that is where urine is going to exit the body. Um, I'm trying to think. 
Did you guys have Sparkle? You didn't have Sparkle, the black lab in here yet? I think last, last year. Last year you did? Okay. If you remember her vulva, how overweight she was, she kind of had like a fold over top of it. Um, if you guys would have been here for Bun Bun the rabbit, when she was overweight, she would get urine scald because it would sit as it exited the body um, through her vulva and, and would scald her skin. So the vulva is just for females. Uh, there's a picture of a dog up top and then a kitty on the bottom. And what do we say about the cat? How do you know if it's a female versus a male? What don't we have to fit? Uh, there's less room between the anus and the vulva. Good. Because they don't have to fit what? Uh, they don't have to fit testicles. Well. That's right. So a female cat has a smaller anogenital distance. Okay, so the space between her anus and her genitals, her vulva, is small because she doesn't need to fit testicles there. So this is a picture of a female cat. All right, as far as some diseases or conditions that a female is more prone to, they're more likely to have incontinence. What was that vocabulary word? Incontinence. Good guess, not struggling. Struggling to do something. You know? Struggling to urinate? Nope, that's what she said. Oh, what's that? Continually urinating at the wrong time? Yeah. So not like, oh, I'm going to pee in the house, but dribbling. Right? You can't hold it. Like when you are an old lady, you gotta wear Depends diapers. It's because you dribble. You're incontinent. You can't hold it. It's not that you pee all over yourself but you might be a little bit leaky, okay? The other thing that females are really prone to getting is a urinary tract infection. So what's that? Yep. It could be painful. Why is it painful? What's going on in there? That's one. Isn't there like more bacteria in this specificity? It could be bacteria. What else could it be? Yep. Blood. Could be blood. What else could it be? What do you do if you're fighting infection? What cells would be there? The leukocytes. The leukocytes, the white blood cells, yep. What else could indicate a, a urinary tract infection by looking under the microscope? Do you know? Parasites? No, not parasites. How about crystals? Crystals, okay. All right, and then we'll talk more about this. We'll show some signs. Now, I'm not saying that a male cannot be incontinent. So Isaiah, you're not 100% safe, okay? But the chances are you're not gonna get that, get that. And same thing for UTI, you could still get one. Just not as common. All right, but here's Isaiah. Males, are more likely to become obstructed. What does that mean, obstructed? They cannot do what? If something's obstructed, what is that? Can't do its job? Yeah, it can't, they can't urinate. They're blocked, all right? Um, some more anatomy for males. Dogs have a bone in their penis. You remember talking about that? A visceral bone. So an os penis, and there's an x-ray of an os penis that's broken. They have a prepuce, which is a skin that covers the penis. So dogs and cats have that. So in this case right here, this would be the prepuce. In this case, this is the prepuce and there's the penis. Okay, I'll describe that picture more in a second. And then they have the actual penis. 
So here's a penis of a cat, here's a penis of a dog. Um, that is where they are going to urinate from. Um, and then we said last week the urethra is actually gonna carry reproductive fluids as well, right? So it's gonna empty out of there um, also. So here's a picture of a cat. So prepuce, penis, two testicles, prepuce, penis is inside, two testicles, he was just neutered. Um, this picture is interesting because you're like, well, it almost looks like it's stuck, right? That's because it is stuck. There's a gland right here that when a dog gets very excited because maybe he just finished mating or maybe he wants to mate, that gland swells and it's actually stuck inside the female. And so um, if you've ever seen, has anyone ever seen dogs mating before? No, you have? I don't know. You don't know, okay. So when dogs mate, so it's like the female and then the male's on top, right? Just like cats. But when they're done, when the, the male has deposited the semen, he actually turns off of her, like jumps off of her, but they're stuck together. And that's why they're stuck together. That's filled with blood and it swells up. And so that makes sure that the semen can get into the female and it's gonna be a, a productive um, mating and she's gonna get pregnant. If that didn't swell up, then a lot of times the female won't let the mating happen or it's not as successful. So that's why that gland swells up. Um, once the gland, the blood in it decreases a little bit, then that gland shrinks and then they are loose. They're, they can be separated. So that's how that penis probably broke up here is because maybe the female tried to get away and twisted his penis that was stuck inside of her. Okay, that's called tying. They're tied when that happens. All right, so interesting fact about cats. Do you notice anything in this picture? Yeah, so there's tiny little barbs. It's like a fish hook all over a cat's penis. Now, if your cat is neutered, he won't have those barbs, okay? That takes hormones to build those, okay? So, those barbs, when a male cat mounts a female cat, it enters her vulva and then those barbs kind of like cause pain. And so she doesn't want to run away. Does that make sense? So like they're not tied like that, but it hurts too bad for her to run. And so she allows the mating so as not to hurt herself. Um, and then when he's done, then he'll get off of her and it doesn't hurt as bad, okay? The other thing that those barbs do is it actually stimulates her to release her um, eggs. So that's how cats start their cycle, is they're stimulated by those barbs. Crazy, huh? Animals sure are interesting. Okay. Did anyone answer me the obstructions? They can't do what? If you're obstructed, you can't. You can't urinate, you can't urinate. What happens if you can't urinate eventually? Yep. You get stones. You can have stones. It could be from a stone. It could be from grit, like crystals building up the but what happens if you can't pee? Um, throw up? No, definitely throw up. You're going to get a lot of pain. Pain? You're going to die. Pretty quickly. Okay? Pretty quickly. Remember we talked about male cats? Do you remember talking about that? Male cats? are very likely to become blocked, it's life-threatening. Whew, you guys are, are you sleepy? Yeah. Man, this is, I feel like this is a little bit brutal right now, to be honest. Okay, 
We're gonna finish up with diseases and conditions. So we have urinary tract infections, we have obstruction or blockage, um, a urolith is a stone, it's a fancy word for a stone. Chronic renal failure, renal lymphoma, where have you heard of that? Can you repeat that? Renal lymphoma. Yeah, which one? Okay, so you remember canine lymphoma. What do you remember from it? Uh, I remember it from your kidney. The kidney is one of them. Yeah. And what? Dogs or cats? Cats. Okay. So cats, if they get lymphoma, it's either in their kidney, so renal lymphoma, or it's in their, do you remember what the other choice was? said old cats get it all the time and you open them up and you euthanize them on the table. GI. GI. Okay, so they're gastrointestinal lymphoma. So here we're just talking about the urinary tract, so we're going to focus on renal lymphoma. Where does a dog get lymphoma? How do you know? Where is it spread through? Can it spread through their lungs? It can spread to their lungs, but where does it start? How do you know a dog has lymphoma? Lymph it's their lymph nodes are enlarged. Remember under your mandible here, your armpits, inguinal, popliteal. Okay. And then we're going to talk about a whole new one, which is antifreeze toxicity. Okay. All right. So you just have a little chart. We're not doing like an entire card for these. Do you have a chart or do you have them listed? No, these are just listed. Listed? All right, so just right beside them, okay? We're not doing a whole card for them. So, the first thing you'll see there is a picture of a dog who peed on the floor. Why did I put that picture, do you think? Should I these are one of your symptoms? It is a symptom, you're right. So, urinating inappropriately. If your dog never pees in the house and it starts peeing in the house, it's not normal. It could be a sign of a urinary tract infection. Um, other signs of a urinary tract infection. How about that urine in the bottom left-hand corner looks pretty dark, right? Mm -hmm. So if you notice that your animal's urine is darker than normal, that wouldn't be normal. Angie, did you have a question? No, I, just, I thought you were gonna ask what it is. It's blood yeah, very good, yeah. Blood, hemat, urea, urine, good. Um, other signs of a UTI, how about pH, doesn't that cause, like if you test it with the, um, the urine test, um, the strips? If, if the pH is up, doesn't that mean that there's no, more likely to be something wrong? Um, pH is usually food, it's usually diet related. It could be, it could be, I'm not going to discount it, but usually it's food. Um, when we look at that dipstick, it's going to be blood or white blood cells, or when you look under the microscope, you'll see blood, you'll see white blood cells, you'll see crystals, you'll see bacteria. Um, when we look through the refractometer, the specific gravity is going to be through the roof. Okay, so greater than at least 1035, 1040. Um, if it's off the charts, greater than 1050, you know something's going on. Something is in that urine. So how do you think they treat a UTI? Any guesses? Go ahead. An antibiotic. An antibiotic, yeah. Usually that's all it takes and it could just be one and done and that's all they ever have for the rest of their life. Okay. People can get this, it's the same thing. Take an antibiotic and you're good to go. Okay, some people get them a lot. Yep. Can't, don't you get that when you get pregnant too? Pregnant? You can, you can, yep. Yep, and some people are just prone to getting them, so they have to drink, um, oh my gosh, what is it? Kind of juice, cranberry juice, does something with actually the acidity of the urine. Um, 
and helps them not get as many UTIs. All right, so questions on that one? Angie? Can bats end up causing UTIs? They could, they could, yeah. Yeah, because my sister ended up getting one, and it's because they said she took too many bats, that's why she saw a lot of bats. Yeah, if, if the, like, let's say you're sweaty and dirty, and then you sit in a bath and that water's kind of like going places, yeah, it could lead to one. So I try to, I would recommend like showering if you've had a real dirty day, um, sweaty, hot, that kind of thing. But usually, but if you think about it, like a pool has chlorine to kill the bacteria, right? But your bathtub doesn't. So yeah, it can cause that. Even when you're pregnant, you're not supposed to take baths or hot tubs, but that's because of temperature. But when you're pregnant, your cervix opens a little bit and it can actually get up into your uterus. So. All right. So I think this one's kind of cool. Stones. So a urolith is a stone. It's just a fancy word. And the interesting thing about stones is there's a million different types. And a lot of times you can actually dissolve stones with food. So there's special diets that you can buy and it will actually break down those stones um, and get rid of them for you. Now, of course, not everyone's that lucky, um, especially um, like this struvite one and this compound one, those don't, they don't dissolve with diet. So you have to go in surgically and take them out. So if you had those stones rolling all around in your bladder, what kind of signs do you think you would have? What kind of symptoms would you have? Yep. Inappropriate urine. Excuse me? Inappropriate urine. Yeah, you could have accidents in the house. Yep. What else? Pain. Yep. Go ahead, Olivia. Pain. So it could be like they're straining to urinate. It could be you pick them up and they, ooh, flinch. Like, oh, that didn't feel very good if you were, you know, holding them under their abdomen. What else? Yeah, hematuria, there's blood in the urine because it's, I mean, it's sloshing around and hitting the walls of the bladder. I mean, oh my golly, that'd be terrible. Okay, worst case scenario, they become blocked, which is where they cannot urinate. So a couple stories there are Bun Bun the rabbit, she actually formed a stone and one of the students caught it, they said, Cook, Bun Bun keeps peeing a ton, but it's only tiny amounts. Well, her stone, I mean, I have it in the cabinet there. Her stone was about this big. I mean, picture a rabbit's bladder is probably this big, so she could only hold this much urine, and then she'd have to pee it out, and then she'd drink more, and then it would fill it, and then she'd pee it out, right? So she had to have surgery to remove her stone. Um, cats, male cats. Theirs is usually not so much a stone, but grit, which is a stone trying to form, but their urethra is so tiny that that grit, it's almost like tiny, tiny, tiny little pebbles. Like when you look after expressing their bladder or emptying that bladder, it almost looks like sparkles. It shimmers because of all the grit that's in there. So a male cat, you're very scared of them becoming blocked um, and not being able to urinate. And if you don't catch that over a day's time, they're probably gone. They're, they're gonna be dead. So that is a huge emergency. Did you have a question? So I was wondering if that was um, like a picture you took or is that just like- No, I just found it on the internet, but I've, we've had tons of these surgeries. Bun Bun the rabbit, um, that dog um, in the peanut butter jar, that stone, I mean, that would, I helped with that one. Um, I've had, I would say mostly these, and they're real scratchy. 
And I mean, I've had one the size of my hand and that was not in a big dog, it was in a smaller dog. Um, I've never had one of those, which is kind of a bummer, but it's probably one that's dissolved with diet and that's why. Um, guinea pigs can get stones. I just read that on Facebook. Someone was having to do a surgery on a guinea pig. So they're trying to figure out anesthesia. Rabbits, I mean, that says right there, rabbit, calcium carbonate, that's what Bun Bun would have had. It's like a deep orange color. Does anyone know why I have a Dalmatian up there? Guess. Yep. Are they prone to Really prone. Really, really prone. Have we had Edie the Dalmatian in here? Yeah. Edie? Okay, remember she had like, you could barely see through the microscope because it was all crystals. So I'm sure one day she's gonna have. They try to have them drink a lot more fluid than normal to try to dilute the urine and get those crystals flushed out. And a lot of them should be on a special diet. So treatment is either surgery or diet. Okay. All right. Chronic renal failure. Chronic, what does the word chronic mean? Chronic versus acute. Yep. It's more severe than acute, which is something small that can be fixed. Chronic's a little bit more scarier and might not be easy to fix. You're right on the right track. You're right on the right track. Acute is all of a sudden, all of a sudden, chronic is over time it's going to get worse and I do agree it's it's going to be harder to treat. Yep. Do you know what it is? What this is? Yeah. Or what the word chronic means? Just like what it is. Like yeah. Is. Yep. So chronic renal failure is just over time. A lot of times this is cats. And what happens, it's, it's basically the same thing as saying in humans, like their kidneys are shutting down. If you've ever heard that, kidneys shutting down. So they're not working the way that they should be. So usually signs of this would be an increased thirst. And that's because their body's actually trying to dilute the urine. It's trying to, to get that kidney up and running. You usually have vomiting and that's because it, the kidneys aren't filtering the waste. So you're having a buildup of waste in your body. And so you're, you're gonna be vomiting, you're unsteady. Um, something that's really kind of gross is that their mouth gets ulcers. It almost looks like hamburger and it reeks, absolutely reeks. It's, a, it's almost like a smell of death. If they have it that bad, it's probably not going to be much longer before they pass away. What yep. do you want to write on for this? For well, the kidney to shut down? You can write that. You can write the ulcers, just anything that I'm saying. So ulcers in the mouth, not able to filter waste. Vomiting. So the way that they try to fix this, in people they do dialysis. You ever heard of that, dialysis? Where they have a port in, um, into their vein and they literally just keep pumping fluid through them and they actually filter their blood through a machine. Like that's pretty intense. Can they do that for cats? Yeah, but that would be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. Um, people get kidney transplants, right? So can cats, so can dogs, but do you think that's very often? You're probably looking at like 20 grand to get a kidney transplant on a cat. Do you think most people can do that? No. Um, I'll have to give you guys an article, maybe I'll do that tomorrow, um, about a cat in that situation, what they did. Um, so for these, what we try to do is change their diet and we do IV fluids for three days and try to flush those kidneys and kind of get them back to 
to working. Um, if after three days, uh, the values are still really high, it's probably not gonna work. So that, that cat probably doesn't have good news. Um, but definitely worth a try. If his kidney values go back down, then it could, it could be fixed. So renal lymphoma, this is what we talked about um, as a disease warm-up card. Cats get either renal lymphoma or GI lymphoma. And if you remember for renal lymphoma, the odds were not good. So even you could try chemo, but it's probably not gonna work very well. They're probably gonna be so sick because of all the waste buildup in their body and in their bloodstream that the chemo is probably just gonna kill them anyways. So it's a terrible outcome. This is not as common as GI lymphoma. GI lymphoma, I saw that all the time, but renal lymphoma was not as common. All right, last one is antifreeze. You guys know what antifreeze does? It like cools down your engine. So antifreeze, it's like a bluish, purplish color. Um, and if you're working out in the garage on your vehicle and you spill some of this, you should try to soak it up with like cat litter or sand, something like that to try to soak it up because if your dog or cat drinks it, it's 80% almost a guarantee that they're going to die no matter what you do. It's really, really tempting. It's like really, really yummy. It's like candy for them. So really the treatment would be IV fluids, like hardcore IV fluids, tons of IV fluids. But the kicker is you would have to start those like right away. Like, oh, I went to the garage. My dad was working on the car. I saw the cat drink it take it to the vet, you might be that lucky 20%. But if you start to have these central nervous system symptoms, like seizing, weakness, they don't have control over their body, like they're stumbling around, then you're probably not gonna fix it. So the sad part about this is, this is actually a really common way for people who don't want animals in their yard to poison them, because it works pretty darn well. Okay, and usually if you're an owner and that's your animal, by the time you know it, it's too late. You guys have questions about that one? Alright, so you already did this romic. So what we're going to do is this review. Um, and we'll have this do, um, how about, what's today, Monday? How about Tuesday afternoon? Okay. I do want to explain one part of that. Um, a lot of it is self-explanatory, like definitions and labeling. A little bit of fill in the blank. But this is something new. And... It is on those diseases, and there's a little box on there. And I gave you an example. I did a box of bloat, but bloat isn't urinary, right? <coughs> right? Okay. So for each column, row, row, you're going to draw a box, and you're going to write four things. So at each corner of the box, you're going to write four things that stand out to you about that disease or that condition um, to help you remember it, okay? So it's just a different way of trying to study for this, okay? So for bloat, I put air and stomach, 
deep chested dog, gastropexy, and uncomfortable. Okay, so it's not just symptoms, it's like treatment, it's who does it happen to, that kind of thing. Okay? All right, that's it.